so guys uh, let me discuss about the synthesis of thyroid hormone here it is the thyroid gland now this is the structure of the thyroid gland the follicular epithelium outside and there is colloid inside and these are the red blood cells these are the parafollicular c cells okay parafollicular c cells this is the basic structure now we we will zoom into one of the thyroid follicular epithelium uh, thyroid follicular cell okay this is the follicular epithelium and from this epithelium we will just zoom in one cell of the epithelium this is one follicular cell now let us zoom into this cell this is the thyroid follicular cell okay this is the thyroid follicular cell we will now study by step by step this is the colloid portion so first first step is the follicular cell will result in the synthesis of thyroglobulin the follicular cell will synthesize the thyroglobulin okay now this thyroglobulin is synthesized by follicular cell and it has been released into the colloid and now thyroglobulin is waiting here for the iodine molecule to come now iodine molecule this is the second step okay this is the second step and this second step is also called as trapping trapping because here the iodide that is i minus iodide is actively transported into the follicular cell iodide is actively transported into the follicular cell which is also called as trapping now this iodide is transported onto the colloidal surface that is the third step in the second step the iodide is transported inside the follicular cell from the extracellular fluid and in the third step this iodide molecule will again be transported into the colloidal surface and this is transported by an important protein which is called as pandrin okay here the iodide is actively transported in the follicular cell without the help of any transporter protein but this iodide will be transported into the colloid from the follicular cell with the help of a important protein which is called as pandrin p e n d r i n so that pandrin if that pandrin is deficient then there is a syndrome called pandret syndrome so that pandrin will help in transportation of the iodide molecule into the colloid from the follicular cell now that iodide will that iodide will combine with the thyroglobulin molecule the thyroglobulin have been waiting for the iodide molecule now the thyroglobulin along with the iodide molecule will form and it will carry the tyrosine tyrosine amino acid okay so the thyroglobulin we all know it is a uh, of thy uh, tyrosine okay so the tyrosine now will form here you see here are other structure this is the tyrosine the if we go to details the tyrosine the third step we have seen the tyrosine will form mono iodo tyrosine with the effect of iodine okay it will combine with the iod iodine iodide molecule i minus which is iodide molecule which have been transported into the colloid by the pandrin now that iodide will combine with tyrosine to form mono iodo tyrosine mit here is the one iodine molecule mono iodo tyrosine now this mono iodo tyrosine will further convert into di iodo tyrosine by combining two molecules of iodine okay now di iodo tyrosine mit dit will get converted into tri iodo thyronine t3 this is the main thyroid hormone okay t3 and t4 so uh, thyroxine is the tetra iodo thyronine which is also called thyroxine so here you can see three iodine molecule and here four iodine molecule uh, although we uh, need not to remember uh, all this structure but just to uh, make the concept clear i have described so tyrosine the thyroglobulin tyrosine is converted into mono iodo tyrosine then di iodo tyrosine then tri iodo thyronine then thyroxine okay now here you see after fourth step the thyroglobulin molecule now it will help in formation of uh, here i have shown you that how t4 and t3 have been formed by all the molecular mechanisms 
Now T3 and T4 will be transported inside the follicular cell again and the thyroglobulin will also be transported along with the MIT and DIT that is monoiodotyrosine and diiodotyrosine. Now this monoiodotyrosine and diiodotyrosine will again convert it into iodine by dehalogenation. Okay, so the dehalogenation process will occur here and this monoiodotyrosine and diiodotyrosine will again convert it into iodine and that free T4 and T3 will be released into the blood. This is the most important thing. The free T3 and T4 that is the triiodothyronine and tetraiodothyronine. T3 is the most active form we all know. So the T4 will ultimately get converted into T3. So free T4 and T3 will get convert uh, T4 will get converted into T3 and here they will act in the target tissues. So ultimately this is the synthesis of thyroid hormone. Thank you.